What's up guys? I'm going to show you how to get a little more power out of the uh, CRF-110s just changing this tube alone. So here we have the stock air box and obviously there's a big backfire screen right behind the intake which we get rid of. And we start out with a two inch opening. It tapers down to I want to say right around 20 millimeter. Let's see some lighting there at the smaller hole there. With this, what we did was ordered a 1.5 inch ID 38 millimeter and an aluminum adapter. As you can see from here, just past the second rib, we cut that off. So one, two, just on the other side, cut that through. And then dimension wise, I want to say it was like right at, yeah, I want to say it was like right at three and three quarters to four inches. Um, just cut off on both sides. So let me show you some dynos so you can see just what kind of performance you'll see with this. All right, so moving over to the dyno. Uh, bear with me on this one because it is going to be information overload here. Um, red bone stock, blue is going to be just that intake tube and the backfire screen. So we're picking up three tenths in the mid range, which comes out to about five to six percent. Carries a couple tenths on out to red line. From there, let's go ahead and put the bigger intake manifold on. And we're going to leave it on the stock ECU so you guys can see what happens. Um, obviously this thing goes extremely lean up into the 18s air fuel wise. So let's add a tune with the air box lid on and then the air box lid off. So going from that green to the orange to the dark blue is just a tune and then a tune with the uh, lid on versus off. So let's go over to the intake tube. It's going to be with the lid on and with the lid off. So quite a bit of gains with that lid on versus off as well. And then for some of you guys that are curious, this is if you remove the spark arrestor. So you actually gain quite a bit in the low end. Uh, you do lose that a little bit in the top end though. From there, let's check out if you go to the bigger throttle body, I do have some information on it as well. So all the all these runs currently are with the stock throttle body. Um, red and blue are going to be just bone stock only the intake as we talked about. These are just the manifold on the stock throttle body. So once we add the oversized throttle body, pick up quite a bit in the top end and even through the mid range. And this is with the lid on. So let's go over to the lid off. This is with the stock intake tube, by the way. Stock intake tube, lid on versus lid off. And then the DIY intake, lid on versus lid off. So I know that's a lot of information in there, so I might have to pause it and kind of read through. Let me see if I can get some of this, uh, some of this clutter out of here. Single graph. I'll zoom in so you guys can pause and then view those when you get a chance. All right, so when you hear us talk about the oversized intake manifold versus the stock, this is what we're talking about. This tapers, starts out at 24 millimeters, tapers down to 13 millimeter, opens back up to, I think, about 20 millimeter, versus this one starts at a 24 and tapers to, a, I believe, 20, 22, somewhere right in there. And then throttle body wise, we have a 19 millimeter. And this is optional for a 22, 24, 26 millimeter.